Danny Flexen here for seconds out, just two days away from the big Fury versus White show, here with Nick Ball. Just did the undercard press conference. Was Isaac Lowe your opponent? Was he a bit more vocal than you were expecting? Um, not really, no. He's, he's like that, isn't he? He's like, um, he's like a little mini Tyson Fury, isn't he? Likes to speak a lot, but yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? Can he fight like a mini Tyson Fury? I guess that's a bit better question. No, definitely not. I don't really know. I haven't seen much of him, but we'll find out Saturday night, but he, he definitely can't fight the way, he, the way he's going on like he can fight. It seems a bit strange up there because one minute he was asking you to have a beer with him after the fight and, and messing around and being quite friendly. And the next minute he was talking about you're not a big puncher and he's going to land a right hand on your chin. What, what did you make of his behaviour? Well, you know yourself being an, um, a, a media guy in an interviewer, that, that screams nerves to me, like um, having too much to say like that. Like, what one is it? Um, do you want to be sound with me or do you want to do, do have a go at me? So I was just cool, calm and collected, yeah, but it screams nerves to me. Yeah, you did well not to get involved because he was kind of asking questions about your punch power. You didn't seem to feel the need to kind of defend yourself. Not really, no. That's um, that's like early on in my career when you're first starting out. Everyone's learning, everyone's um, you know on the way up. And to be honest with you, like he's went he's went a bit looking there, and he I I'm early fights. Like he wants to be focused on Nick Ball now, not not three years ago. When you hear him saying he's prepared to meet you in the middle of the ring, go toe to toe, that's obviously your style. Does that make you quite happy? I mean, he might not actually do it, but does that make you happy that you think he could do that? If he does do that, he's going to have a bad night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if he does get on the bike and move? Have you got kind of plan A, B and C? And that's also um, that's also bad for him as well, because you, you, you know my fitness and you know what I'm like, and them rounds are just a number and we've, we've prepared well. Um, like for these for these fights and the, and, and the twelve rounds and that the type of work we put in is uh, different. Um, I want to thank uh, Thomas, me uh, Chris, um, Tom Christie, me um, strength and conditioning coach at Peak Performance, and everyone there because um, the work we put in there is a different level. So you're with Frank Warren, of course, but he's Tyson Fury. There a lot was made of it at the press conference. Tyson Fury's longtime friend, best man at his wedding, all of that stuff. Do you feel like the home fighter? Do I feel like a home fighter? Yeah. Um, yeah and no, yeah and no. It's a bit mad in it, but as again, I don't really know what a home fi uh, fighter feels like. Cause yeah, cause th this, is, this is new to me, so I'm not really bothered with whether I'm the home fighter or the away fighter. I know what I can do, and I'm gonna do that Saturday night. What can a win over Isaac Lowe and winning that WBC strap as well be a platform for? Where can you go from here? What doors will it open? I think it'll open loads of doors. You know, um, it's a massive opportunity. There's a um, there's 94,000 people there. Um, when I perform, I think I feel like I'm going to blow up. I said that there in the press conference. I feel like I'm going to blow up. And then in terms of my career, this belt I'm fighting for gets you the world ranking. So go for the world titles after this or the Europeans, whatever. And when you were a kid, obviously you're not from London, you're from Liverpool. But when you were a kid, did you ever dream of fighting at Wembley Stadium? Obviously, it's the National Football Stadium. To be honest, I never even I never even thought of it. And I never thought I'd, I'd, I'd fight here, to be honest. Um, but now I'm here, it's, it's, it's mad to me. But um, I've just got to take it all in, yeah? And then have it, it's like a boss experience, innit? What is the dream for you in terms of either a venue or a fight or a title, whatever it might be? Um, the dream for me in, in, in boxing is why you get in boxing is you want to become world champion. But, you know, that's like, you reach that then what? So then, then you go on there and you make, you make new dreams and stuff like that. You just take everything as it comes on, on the journey. And just a comment about the current situation at ERT as well. You've got so much talent there. You've got Pete, uh, Andrew Kane's doing really well, the McGrail brothers, of course. Just about what's going on there and, and how good it feels to represent them on this big stage as well. Yeah, well, last week um, you had Brad Strand um, in Telford with Andrew Kane. And then on Friday, you've got um, Joe McGrail, <coughs> Peter McGrail. Yeah, and then me on Saturday. So that just speaks for itself what we're doing at ERT um, with Ant and Paul. Um, I feel like myself, the gym, it's, uh, it's underrated and it hasn't really had its um, recognition that it deserves, but <clears throat> after these next couple of weeks, it's going to, definitely. Brilliant. Well, very, very best of luck. Obviously, you've got to go away now. Can't eat for another day. Well, you can eat, but <laughs> you've got to be careful for another day. But yeah, very best of luck. Really looking forward to your fight.